This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on November the 2nd, 2015. We hope you enjoy. Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's one o'clock. I guess it's time to start. So today, what I would like to do is a Q&A session. We haven't had one for quite a while. So you have questions. I have answers. Good, good, good. Okay, uh, so right off the bat, are there any questions about uh, what we talked about last week with uh, Sergeant Payne? Any questions that are on your mind that perhaps I could uh, relay to him uh, and get some get some more information on? Yes. I went home immediately. I get one of those things on my computer from T D Waterhouse. Now I think it could be investigated. I called up T D Waterhouse and I said, "Don't touch the link." Yeah, yeah exactly. So. So I've seen. And it that was in. And that was in your mail? In my email. Yeah. Um, okay. That, that is a common thing. I mean, it's, it, it's nothing that is going to be pursued directly by the police department. There are millions of these things a day. Um, and um, I think at this point, um, most users are aware of the fact that anything from your bank is not true. Your bank does not contact you in that manner. The only time you may get um, something from that has some bank affiliation to it is if a friend of yours sends you an email with money in it. Okay? This can be done. You, uh, I would go to my bank's website, and I would, and I do this all the time. I have people I send emails to to email them money, and they they email me money. Okay, and it's done through your bank website. And so when the email arrives at the uh, the the person's email address, when they uh, they will say uh, so and so has sent you money. Click on this link to uh, start the deposit process. And when you do, it will open up a link that opens up um, all of the bank websites or, or gives a link to all the bank websites and you click on your bank and log in. Um, that's the only time that you will get communication from a banking website asking for information. Is that called PayPal? PayPal is quite another story. Uh, you have to sign up for an account with PayPal. Um, and you have to jump through some hoops to make sure that your banking information works and your credit card information works in PayPal. Um, and once you've done that, it is entirely possible that you will get emails from PayPal, from PayPal, uh, saying, uh, we've lost your information or your information is damaged, please click on the link and please log in. You don't do that. What you do is you go to PayPal's website. You, go, you open up uh, Internet Explorer or uh, Google Chrome or whatever you have and you go to PayPal.com and log in from there. And I think you will find that in 999.9% .9 of the cases, there's nothing wrong with your login. It'll take you right there. Okay? There's nothing wrong with it. it it's almost guaranteed that if you get an email from uh, PayPal, from Amazon, from um, UPS, FedEx, or anything else that you can name where 
uh, as a matter of convenience, you use their services for shipping and receiving, for moving money, uh, for anything like that, you will get phishing emails. You will get them. Don't touch them. <laughs> In no case do, do any of these entities ever ask you for information in an email. If you get a request for information in an email, don't touch it. It's not right. It's not from them. Okay? I'm so glad he was here because I wouldn't have realized that yep. this was a and, and And you could have clicked on it, and for all the world, it would have looked like your bank website, and you start entering information, and you hit send, and someone else has it. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Uh, so that's uh, that's uh, dealing with last week. Um, yeah, uh, had a question right at the start of the class about uh, email. Um, that is not going to work anymore. So we'll go this way. Um, these pretty much all were, work the same. Uh, what we're, the, the information we're looking at here is how to disable accounts or enable accounts or make new accounts in, um, when, uh, in Outlook from, um, the, um, from Microsoft Outlook as part of your office suite. Um, Windows Live Mail as a local client as it is here or any other local client that you may use um, Thunderbird Mail or Eudora Mail or whatever you might be using. Um, they pretty much all work the same. In this instance um, I have my Gmail accounts up and um, what you want to look for in the menu bar is something is going to say accounts. Now, in your case, in, my, in Outlook, it will be under tools. But here we find accounts right away. So in, in, my, in my case, um, I'm going to click on properties here. But you would do the same. You would click on tools, uh, find uh, accounts, not options, but accounts. You click on that. And then you're, uh, it's going to open up another page, which will um, show you what accounts you have. And in this case, um, it's showing me my Gmail accounts. Uh, let me just check one thing here. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. If I had more than one account um, in this in this uh, local client, it would give me a list. Yeah, um, and so your simpatico your simpatico account is still there. Okay. If you want to get rid of it, you just simply highlight the simpatico account, and and to the right of it, you'll find delete. Okay. As soon, um, um, or you no, uh, you click highlight the account, and then um, up at the top it may say change. Okay, if you click on change, then it will give the give you the opportunity to delete the account. Does that get rid of everything to do with oh. Simpatico? Yes, it does. Unfortunately, if you if you delete the account, you delete the its inbox. Okay, and everything you have in that inbox goes away. Now, what you can do is let me this just get is just for email. yeah. What you can do is you can make another folder. Um, 
somewhere under your inbox list. You can make another folder and call it old mail. Okay, and then you can take all of the pieces of old mail from your Simpatico account before you delete it and copy them in there. Then you can delete the account. You still got the old mail with all its addresses and everything and the account is gone. Okay, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna try and update itself um, ever again, it's gone. The old mail, you can only open it, you can't transfer it, you can't move it. Oh yeah, uh, the, old, the old mail, um, you can open it. That's all. Um, if you want to forward it from a new email address, you should be able to do that. You should be able to do that. Failing that, you can just copy and paste the, uh, the text of the email into a brand new one and, um, and go that way. Um, okay, does that answer your question about getting rid of this account? Okay, yeah. Uh, the, look under, it's either change or, uh, or when you click on change, to it'll open a, accounts. yeah, it, it'll, it'll open another little panel to allow you to delete it me, that account. your account is not up to date. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's not there anymore. <laughs> There's email there. Yeah. In the folder. Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions? More questions? Yes. Up in the toolbars across the top there. The only thing I have is uh, the Google search line, and I have no other places that I can find accounts, everything, you know, anything that's listed up there. I can't have none of those. He's got Outlook. Oh, you're on Outlook.com? Yeah. Outlook.com, is that what we put on for you? Okay. All right. I have no, none of those bars up there so that I can search to yeah. resize All right. or change or... Let me see if I can find Outlook.com. I think I put it here. Oh, here we go. We're going to open this web page. Out, yes, uh, Outlook.com is a website, okay? Outlook, the program, is a local email client. This, this is on the cloud, on the web, and your program, Outlook, is a local program, all right? Okay, let's get rid of this, and we'll see if we can find some... Okay. Get out of there, I don't want that. Your apps live here, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, it logged me into, uh, into an Outlook um, email account that I have for this machine. Um, so what we're looking for is what again? Well, see how you've got the inbox up. Yeah. It took me forever to figure out how to make the lettering bigger. Because there was no icons, nothing to make it bigger. Or no place to click yeah, on. When you have out the top, yeah, there's nothing there. Yeah. Yeah. That's right, yeah. That's true. I can't see it. You mean like that? <laughs> yeah. That's about it. That's about it. <laughs> And I was trying to make the Outlook writing there bigger. Yeah. Okay. So I well, find, I finally did find that part, but the, I don't have any other icons for changing anything. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. That's we'll true, yeah. let's let's look at um, what I just did. Hang on. Is that permanent? No. Let's let's look at what I just did. You said that the 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 text was too small for you to see. Okay. Remember that what you're looking at here in Outlook.com or any of the others, Gmail or Yahoo Mail or whatever you want, is a web page. It's a web page. And so it can be manipulated like any other 
web page. And to make the text bigger, um, the shortcut to do that, uh, because in uh, Microsoft Edge you don't have a menu bar anymore, Okay, when you click on, um, in Microsoft Edge, when you click on these three little dots here up in the upper right, um, you will, it will open. You mean those three lines? Yeah, no, the, the three little dots, not the three. Anyway, this is Microsoft Edge, and uh, they're, they're just about all the same. Um, up here, um, if you click on one of these, you're going to get what you're looking for. And what you're looking for is a contextual menu. And um, and what I have done under Zoom is I have zoomed to 175%. Okay. Now, if you click on Zoom, it will do that. The plus or minus, it will make things bigger on the web page. The other way to do it is to hold down the control key on your keyboard, CTRL, the control key. You hold that down and you press the plus key. Just tap it. And it makes everything bigger, bigger, bigger. Or smaller, smaller, smaller. Okay? This is done for, you can do this in any web page that you have up. Okay, if, if you're uh, searching in, on a Google page and, uh, and you can't see the text, you do control plus, it makes that text a little bigger. A little bigger, a little control plus, control minus makes it smaller. Okay, that's for a web page. Now, let's look at, um, let's open this email here. It should open. So it opened the email. I, don't, I clicked on it and it opened it. It's a little slow. But you'll see that um, now you have some inputs which you can do some things with the email. Uh, you can make a new one. You can reply to the one you're looking at. You can delete it or you can archive it off to somewhere in folders you've already made. And um, there are a bunch of things you can do here, but only when, only when you have clicked on the email and sort of opened it, do, do these things appear, okay? So you've, I've highlighted the email. These things start to appear. I can make a new one. I can reply to this one. I can delete it, whatever I want to do. So let's just, for the sake of argument, delete it. Okay, it's gone. Now, um, there are other things that you can do uh, in Outlook. Um, these little squares here are other things that you can do with your mail, like find um, find the people in your email. You, you have a calendar. Uh, you have tasks. All of this is available on the web. Okay? Not locally, but on the web. Um, is that just not in Windows 10? I can't do that. You, know, you, can do, you can do it in Windows 7, Windows Vista, um, Windows 8. Yeah. It's not just, this is not just Windows 10. This is a web Okay. Yes, that square thing here. Yeah. So you click on that square thing and you get uh, other things like you can search for people and tasks and, and uh, you can make other things happen. You can start uh, an instance of, of, uh, of Microsoft Office or however you want to do it. Um, so that pretty much takes care of that. Uh, you just have to fiddle with it, okay? And sort of remember what you did. 
Yeah. When something interesting happens, you say, what right, do? what did I do? This is just only a couple of seconds ago. I should be able to do it again. <laughs> okay, but if you leave it for a minute and say, oh, that was interesting a minute ago and try and go back to it, you're lost. I did it yesterday and got back to it today, so I feel pretty good. Okay, the confidence is building. Confidence is building. <laughs> Okay, so there we go. Uh, email. Question? Yeah. Yes? The Java, it wasn't a, any uh, um, icon to, to install a new stuff. So, so what should I look for? Where should I look? Okay. Because I missed it when it was. Yeah. I didn't do it. And that's why it was gone. Okay, <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk about Java. Um, now, your computer does need Java to operate. It's unfortunate, but it does. Uh, it doesn't really need um, any Adobe products like Flash to work, but Java it needs. So when I look in the control panel, I can see that the, J the Java engine is there. Okay, it's, there's an entry for it. But to get rid of it or update it, you, um, you have to go to um, Programs and Features. And you will see in Programs and Features an entry for Java. Now, your, your uh, entry will be for an old version of it, Java 6. Java 6. Yeah. Okay, you have to uninstall it. And to do that, you just simply highlight it. Yeah, that part is easy. You highlight it and click on uninstall and it goes away. Okay, now comes the fun part. Getting the new Java. Okay, and you want you want to go to, uh, let's use Chrome for this. Yeah, let's, let's use uh, Google Chrome for this. May take a minute, it's a little bit slow today. But you could use other, something other than Google Chrome. Yeah, yeah, you can use any, any web page for this that you want. What we're gonna do as we're going to search for java.com. And the first entry is for java.com. Don't search for just Java. Search for java.com because that's where you want to be. So we're going to go to the website. Now there's an entry here for download free Java software, okay? And I know that this is okay, but if yours is a little bit different, you may be directed to a web page that is not Java. So you always want to go to the website of the program that you're trying to download. In this case, it's Java, so we're going to go to java.com. That's our first place. Okay, and now we're on the page where it says free Java download. Okay, so you click on that free Java download and it will start and it will work and everything will be wonderful. Except for, <laughs> you spoke too soon, <laughs> except for, when you allow Java to load, it will want to make some changes to your computer and it will tell you all about it. There, we'd like to install this and there's a checkbox with a check in it. And we'd like, well, since you've installed this, we thought maybe you'd like to install that. And there, there's a checkbox. Uncheck every checkbox you can find. Clear them. Clear the checkboxes. If you leave them there, Java will load all of this 
the technical term is crapola <laughs> on your computer. And you don't want that. Okay. So uh, I don't know why Java, Java is owned by Oracle Software now. I don't know why they do this. They, they don't have to. They've got tons and tons and tons of money. They don't have to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. want to take away Google Chrome. Yeah. And give you Google Bing or something. Yeah. We've got a couple things. So I was looking for the spot to tell me where I could get Chrome and keep Chrome. And I couldn't. Well, you just so uncheck. I uncheck yeah. everything. Yeah, and, and it should have been okay if you yeah. unchecked everything. Yeah, I did. Yes. Will Microsoft notify you if there's a new version of Java? Well, yes, Java will do it. Uh, it's yeah. coming from Oracle. Yeah, that there's a new version. I, but I yeah. I yeah. Now, may I inject a question? Yes. Like I'm always doing this. Where do you put your download? It's going to download. Okay, to it's where? going to download and to by default, by when I say by default, unless you have changed it. Okay. Unless unless you have changed the method by which something downloads it's going to download to the downloads folder. Okay? Yes. You have a downloads folder. Yes. Now let's let's find let's find a way to find it. Okay? Let's find a way to find your downloads folder because it's relatively easy or it can be relatively hard. <laughs> Okay, but for most, in most cases, if you hit that download button in any browser that you have, it's going to go to the downloads folder. You can make it go somewhere else, but by default, it's going to go to the downloads folder. Let's just stay with default. Okay, so where is the downloads folder? Um, we can click on our library folder down here in the taskbar. I'm calling this the library folder because it is not your user home folder. It's a representation of it. It's not your user home folder. But we can click on it there. So let's do that. Does everybody have that? Yeah, everybody will have that. And it opens up an explorer page, a file explorer. And lo and behold, there is your downloads folder. It's usually in, in the first couple three um, folders that you see on the top left. Okay, And if we click on that downloads folder, it's going to show us all the downloads that we have made. Now I'm just going to change it a little bit to show, make it show uh, as you would see it on yours. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Where are we here? View. Okay. I'm going to click on details. Okay, so that's how you would see your downloads folder. Uh, details of the stuff that came in. Now, if you've got a lot of stuff in there and you don't know what the name of the file was that you downloaded, in most cases you won't because it will, it will be something like F5D7050V4Drivers.exe. Okay? It's going to be somewhere that you don't know what the name is. The, the best way to find out where your download is in the downloads folder is if you just did it a minute ago, is to let it show you. The last download you made, okay? And so if we click on by date, right here at the top it says the name of the, of the download by date, by type, by size, by tags. If you click on the date and it brings up today's date and you've made a download today, there it is, okay? Easy to find. Easy to find. The same holds true with, um, with documents. 
Okay, let's let's say you've you you've got a whole page full of documents that you've brought over from another computer. There are hundreds of them, if not thousands. And you make a new one today. My most recent document, dot doc. Well, if you forget the name or you didn't spell it right, it's going to be buried in here somewhere and you'll never find it again. Except for the fact that you can search for things by the date modified. Today's date. If you made it today and you can't find it, or you made it yesterday and you can't find it, click on by date modified. And it will give you, it will show you um, the closest date to, the, to today. And your, your document will be there right at the top. Misspelled and everything. Okay. Now, what I did was I, I showed you this is in what's called the libraries folder. And the libraries folder is only a representation of what is supposed to be in your user folder. With your name on it or owner or user or whatever is there. However it was set up. In my case, I set it up with my name. Okay? That's the user folder. And all of your stuff will be there. If you open it up, you will see that all of your stuff is there from the downloads, desktop, documents, blah, blah, blah. But it's, it's all also here. Now, this is not the representation. This is where stuff really resides. In the representation, perhaps a mistake will get made and it won't show up, but it will show up always in your user folder. Okay? And if you've got a thousand things on your desktop, like I do, um, it's easier to go searching through this list in the desktop than it is to look at all of these things here and where did I put it again? <laughs> You'll get lost. It's always easy to go to your file explorer and look for stuff there. Okay? Um, only if you have Google Desktop Search, and I do not recommend it. It's, it's a very old thing, and uh, I think they've stopped doing it, and that's a good thing. But no, you can't Google it. <laughs> Once you've done this, Jared, down the road, is that the end of what you have to do? No, there is more. <laughs> you have to install it. <laughs> Okay, and, um, and now I'm going to show you um, how to uh, quickly uh, get a hold of a program that you can install. Now, here's our old friend VLC right here. Okay, it's already installed on this computer, so I'm not going to install it again. But what I can do is I can highlight the program and I can right click and you will see that it says open. Okay. Sometimes if it's a program it may say install, but it will always say open. If it's an executable program that's going to install something, you just simply open it and follow instructions. And uncheck checkboxes as you go. Um, and so that's how you're going to get your new copy of Java. It will come to you as um, as java.exe or something. Well, won't it say install? It might, if you right click on the program as you got it, um, it may say install, but it's probably going to say open. Okay? It's probably going to say open. It may say install. It's hard to say. Yes? Did that come automatically with Windows 10? What's that, Java? Yeah. Um, no. Um, well, no, uh, what's happened is that uh, Windows 10 is using your old version of Java from Windows 8 or Windows 7. Um, 
if you got updates to Java before you moved over to Windows 10, it will be fine. I had eight, eight yeah, it's probably okay. It may want a small update or something, but it's probably oh, fine. Okay. In, in our case, we're looking at Java 6, which uh, is old, old, old. It needs to be replaced. So, yes? So when what? Oh, Go ahead, now. When it was downloaded, how did you get that? Then after it was downloaded, then you got that page up by doing what? Okay, let's go back to it one more time here. Uh, by default, your download is going to go to your downloads folder. Oh. Okay? And there are two ways to get to it. You can get to it from the libraries folder here, or if you have it on your desktop, to your user folder here. If it's, if it's not on your desktop, where it's going to be is it's going to be um, as part of your menu, okay? So in this case, it's it's uh, it's File Explorer, and so if I go over here and I click on it, and I, I highlight it, okay? It's opened up the File Explorer and shows me all of my downloads folders and all of my folders. Um, again, okay? So that's where it is. It's, it's in your downloads folder by default. Yes? If you were to delete all forms of Java, what would happen to your computer? Um, and how would you know you've done that dumb thing? <laughs> stuff would stop working. Um, <coughs> particularly if you go to places, um, well, uh, your um, if you go to Kojiko Mail, it won't work. It needs Java to work. On the website, uh, many web games will not work unless you have Java installed, the latest version. Uh, there are lots of things that just stop working if you, do, if you don't have Java. Will it not come up and say Java is required for this? Yeah. Sometimes it will. Or, um, or it may just bring up uh, the, jo the Java circulating balloons and they'll just sit there and circulate forever, saying, Java's not here, I can't find it. Okay. So our step one is to remove whatever Java's in there. Well, um, if it's six or seven, yeah, manually remove it. Yes. If it's eight, it should upgrade, if not, it will tell you, you have to remove this version first. Okay. So then you go back in to your, but it will tell you. I can't, I can't automatically take this, this Java version out to replace it with a new one. You have to do it by hand. Mm -hmm. I don't have trouble getting the installing thing from this, I think. Well, uh, my instruction will be on our video. So find it in the video and just keep going back to it, you know. Back up, back up a minute. Listen, listen, listen. Okay, got it. Do the next thing. S start again. Do the next thing. Okay, it's there. It's there. It's relatively easy to do. And once you've done it a couple of times, once you've done installed a program a couple of times, I'm not saying it's going to be second nature, but you'll understand what's happening. Yes? Sometimes, I believe it's a file, if you try to open it up, it comes up and says, what program do you want? Exactly so. Yes. And, okay. And if you don't know. If you don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Now, um, let's look at something here where we can, um, we can find out what, uh, more information. All right. Let's look at... Uh, I'm trying to do this without doing a shortcut. All right, let's do it with this picture. Okay, what I've done is I've highlighted the, uh, the icon or the file. And what I want to do is I want to go to Properties. And the file in the properties mode, it's, it's information, is going to tell me some things. Um, 
let us just say that this was not a JPEG file. This was a PNG file. Okay. Um, now a PNG file can be a picture. Okay. Uh, but your computer may not know how to open it. It may not know what to use to open it. And so you can, um, once you know the file extension, dot something, it's either three letters or four letters, dot something, then you can start searching for a program that will open it. And um, for the most part, a lot of this happens uh, with Adobe files, uh, Adobe Reader files, dot PDF. Okay, uh, if you if you get the uh, the uh, file extension .pdf and you don't have a PDF reader, it doesn't have anything to open it with. Okay, the same thing with a .doc. If you don't have um, the uh, Microsoft suite or a, an Office suite that understands what .doc is, uh, you haven't got anything to open it with, and that's why it's saying you have a problem. So go to the file, get the file extension, the target type, okay? Let's, let's look under general here and see if we can get some more information. Um, under details, yeah, okay. It gives you lots more information under details. It gives you the, the file name and its file extension, the file name .jpg. Okay, so you're getting uh, lots of information that will can help you. Um, and then if you're, if you're still having problems, you can go, do a Google search, how to open dot something. And it will say, oh, and your search will, should provide an answer. Oh, you need this program to open it. Okay, and if the program is free, um, you can think about it. Ask me first. <laughs> Ask me first. Okay. Uh, where are we here now? Okay. Um, more questions. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. What has happened to my video voice? I have the picture, but I'm not getting the sound. I was. Okay. <laughs> it's my favorite. <laughs> okay. A a video with sound. Oh, I love these juice. I love these people. Uh, where is my stop here? Stop doing this. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, now, these are videos that you have downloaded, or are they videos on the internet? What my videos? They're in my emails. Okay, they're in your emails. All right. Yeah. Now, if if you look at my videos from the link I sent you, do they play? Can you hear them? I haven't got any. Yeah, he didn't have my email. Oh, okay. He's got it now. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, if someone sends you uh, a video in an email, does it have sound? No. No. Okay. Um, with, with YouTube, I'm not getting sound either. It's just okay, you're not getting sound in YouTube? Okay. Uh, the first thing you want to look at uh, for no sound on a computer is down here in the lower right. Lower right, right, right. Uh, you'll see a little icon that looks like a speaker. Okay. If there is an X through it, and I'm going to put one here. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, if there is an X through it or anything beside it or anything other than just that little speaker, the speaker is turned off. It's off, turn, someone has turned it off. That means you have to go in and turn it on. How? Good question. In many, in many cases, all you have to do is right click on, this, on the, the little speaker icon. You want to open the volume mixer. Okay. And it should bring up a little application that shows you your speakers and your sound system. The sound system is the, is the software that's running on your computer that allows you to hear the sound. Uh, this is just the final link to your speakers, turn them on, turn them off. So in this case, I'm going to click on them and turn them on. Okay. And now you see there's nothing interfering with these speakers or there shouldn't be. The other thing that you want to be sure of is that your speakers are plugged in properly. Do you have separate speakers or are you waiting for them to come through your laptop? Okay. Um, you should, with, with those things, you should be able to then hear sound if, if you've done this correctly. Okay, all right. Beyond that, now you're getting into really wonky stuff where you're going to click on your system sounds and you're going to go into playback and you're going to see are, are the speakers uh, are the speakers there and do they have a check mark that says yes they're ready to use and is there another set of speakers or is there a set of headphones or blah blah blah. Um, if you can't figure that out you're going to have to call me because I can't talk you through it. How did you get that window? Okay, it's that little window is, is part of system sounds. Click on that. Yeah, click on that. Now, um, as I've said before, sound on a computer is usually the bane of your life. If it's not working properly, you will have hours and hours and hours of tears trying to make it work. Yeah, okay, so that means there's something wrong with your speakers. Yeah, go go buy, throw them away, buy new. <laughs> um, okay. Um, that's, let's um, go away from this now about sound. I, I know I haven't given you a lot of information, but um, the last thing we want to look at here was I had a question before the class started, um, or we want to talk about new computers for sale. Uh, are they coming with Windows 10, right? What's good to buy? Um, where to get it? You know, you don't want to go to some place and get ripped off. Um, okay. The source. Yeah, all right. They are on their way out as far as a company goes. They are part of Best Buy now, okay, um, but they, they may be just turned into nothingness in the next little while. Nobody knows. So, you look at the source flyer. Nobody is going to be more expensive than the source. They won't have sales if they are. So you can look at the source flyer and see what's out there. Right here on the front page, we have an HP PC laptop, $3 or $389.99, 390 bucks. Now you've got to think to yourself, okay, that's a really nice price for that. What am I going to do with it? If I'm going to be manipulating pictures, and making movies like I make them, and playing macho games, mucho games on it, I cannot recommend a $400 computer, especially in a laptop. 
If you are just going to peruse the internet for information you want and do email, I can recommend this computer. It's what you want to do. The more elaborate things you want to do with it, the more it should cost you. So uh, 400 bucks is about bargain basement price for this computer, $400 plus tax. Um, and for 400 bucks, I do not recommend that you buy their service plan. At 400 bucks, this computer is disposable. If you break it or it breaks by itself, sorry about your luck, but if you bought a service plan with it, you probably paid another $150 for it. Okay? I'd say for that kind of money, take your lumps. If you're buying an $800 laptop, <coughs> twice the price, I'd say in that case, maybe you might want to think about a service program for that laptop. Um, because to replace it, it's 800 bucks, and that's a lot of money, and maybe they can fix it for the money you've got in it. You're only going to get a year out of it, um, but these days, computers are like refrigerators. You can buy one tomorrow, and two months later, it's toast. It won't work, it's leaking everywhere, it blows the fuses in your house. Or it can run for 30 years with no issues, like a refrigerator. These computers are the same way. Um, they can give you nothing but grief in two months, or they can run till the end of their usable life in 10 years without an issue. It's sorry about your luck. Really and truly it is. If you want to buy a more expensive computer, uh, I would say that there are certain brands that you want to be looking at, and HP is not one of them. The best brands that you can buy that are being offered right now are Lenovo, which is a uh, Chinese brand. Uh, it's the old IBM brand. Uh, the, those are usually starting at mid-level prices, s mm, 550 to 650 to 700 bucks. A, uh, Asus, A-S-U-S, is another good brand. Now, they're all Chinese, by the way. Um, is another good brand to buy. Um, Acer, the higher-end Acers, um, in the $600 range are good computers to buy. Um, now the last thing that you want to look at is what um, other accessories should you be buying with a new computer. And uh, <coughs> the one thing you want to look at is how old is my printer? <coughs> how old is my printer? Because um, First off, if it's an old printer, the new computer may not be compatible with it. You won't be able to get software to make it run. Um, and the next thing is, is that printers are, again, disposable. You shouldn't be paying any more than between $70 and $100 for a printer. And we've talked about the price of ink. So it's between $70 and $100 for a printer. And... Um, a new printer for your new laptop or new computer is probably the way to go. Yes? What about uh, scanners and... Here again, the scanners, um, if you've got a scanner and it works, great. Um, if you've got a scanner and you plug it into Windows 10 and you can't make it work, you're probably not going to get it to work. Would there be a new one that would... Uh, a, a, yeah, a, a single purpose scanner. You might be able to get one from Canon, I'm not sure, but usually most all-in-one printers have a scanner with them. So, um, 
Now, the, the other thing that you, you want to look at with a scanner is, here again, what are you going to be using it for? Um, there are scanners out there that can make scans of 35 millimeter uh, film that you would uh, get from an old film camera if you had those uh, that film done in slides okay you can you can buy a scanner that will scan those and make a really nice picture of them really nice um, but they are expensive so yeah scanners are available if that doesn't work on your Windows 10 it's not likely to yes uh, when you're talking about buying the computers, are we looking at, what is it, Intel that has like i3, i5, i7? Yes, yeah. So, um, unfortunately, I have a HP <laughs> that you don't like, <laughs> but uh, and it has an i5 in it. Yeah, that's a good computer. Yeah. That's a good computer. Uh, the technologies of the i-series chips are about four years old now, going back to the original i3s. Those chips were a step up um, from the Pentium chips, uh, chip models. Um, and they were faster, uh, they were a little more power efficient, and the i5s were faster again and a little more power efficient. The i7s were hugely fast and power efficient, and that was four years ago. The, these chipsets of the i series have been upgraded as far as they can go, and so. The latest series of i-series chips from Intel are about as good as you're going to get. Then we're waiting for the next stuff to come along. Um, but uh, a, a computer that is uh, in the i-series of Intel, um, a 5 or a 7, is a good bet. Is a good bet. The AMDs, um, you want the latest technology in AMD. Um, AMD and Intel are still fighting it out, who has the best chips. But you know what? In this day and age, they're all good. They're all good. There is no difference in performance. It's a numbers game. So they're all good. Okay, uh, one last question. Anything? Microsoft Edge, is that replacing Internet Explorer? Yes, it is. It is. I haven't really oh. explored it too much. Okay, now, it. here's the thing. If you want to stay with uh, Internet Explorer, you can. Okay, and here's how you're going to do it. I haven't done this yet, so I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. But they're both on mine, I think. Yeah, in Windows 10, you want to open up um, your uh, menu and you want to go to All Apps. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, it, uh, here it goes. Okay, so it's, it's given you a list of all the apps. Now, I believe that Internet Explorer is still in the folder um, Accessories. I believe it's still in your Accessories folder. Maybe not. Okay, let's do a search then for Internet Explorer. Desktop app, Internet Explorer. What you want to do is you want to open it. Okay, it's opening up, and you'll see that it has opened um, a shortcut down here on the taskbar. Mm -hmm. If you go to that, if you go right there and you right click, it should give you the option to pin this to the taskbar. That's what you want to do. You want to pin it to the taskbar so that it's always available with Edge or um, Mozilla or Chrome or whatever. Okay, you can group them all together just by dragging them around, but you got to get it open first to do that. 
All right? So you can pin it to your taskbar. It's just like, I mean, I have Chrome as my default, but I yeah. need to have something else to back up. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, I can just go to the Chrome. And the same holds true. You right click up at the top here and uh, to get your menu bar and your favorites bar um, back. Okay. But um, unless you um, really have need of Internet Explorer, that it's opening very specific pages that nothing else will, go with Edge. Because Edge is a stripped down version of Internet Explorer. It does not have all of these features of ActiveX controls, finally. And so it's a little safer to use. Microsoft Edge is only with Windows 10. With 10, yeah. I yeah. Okay, I think we've uh, pretty much beat this devil to death. <laughs> I have one more question. Yeah. Quickly. <laughs> My printer is spinning out as many sheets, plain white, as the, they're going to print next. Before I came over, I wanted 10 sheets of a certain thing. Yeah. Ten sheets, plain white, and then it printed ten of the copy. What is it doing? I don't know why it's doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it's doing that. That's something that you know a guy like me has to look at. Uh, I can't see what you're seeing, so I really can't give you advice on why it's doing it. Um, I have not run across it. No, you're special. <laughs> That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.